So the first item from my collection that I'd like to show you is this wonderful iconoscope television camera tube. It was actually quite a breakthrough in television production because it was the first camera tube that was invented that not only could scan an optical image, but actually used the storage effect so it could accumulate light between scans. And what this did is it made it massively more light sensitive than all previous television tubes, of which there really weren't many. Um, it's quite an incredible piece of glasswork. If you just look at it, um, it was probably hand blown, hand fabricated, um, really quite intricate. Um, a couple of key parts. This part over here is the electron gun, just like you would get in a cathode ray tube in an old television set and it sends an electron beam down to scan the target, this flat piece over here. Maybe you can see it better from the back. And that flat piece that it scans is actually a piece of mica. And I'll very quickly show you a piece of mica, which is a natural material. It's a rock. This is a piece of mica right here. And you'll see it flakes off into very thin sheets. And if you're really careful, you can break off sheets that are so thin that they're actually transparent. So you may or may not be able to even see the tube through this piece of mica. Anyway, the purpose of the mica in this case was not for its transparency, but because it's an excellent electrical insulator. And what they would do is coat this sheet of mica with tiny little globules of silver coated with cesium. And what would happen is when the electron beam would hit those globules of cesium, depending on the charge, the charge would be transferred to a plate on the back of the mica and you'd be able to pick up the charge over here. Now the question is, of course, how does the charge get on the globules of cesium coated silver? And the answer is, it is formed on that cesium coated silver when an image produced by a lens, like this magnifying glass, is focused on that flat metal plate. And what happens is when the light hits those globules of silver, they give off electrons. And the more electrons they give off, the more positive charge each piece of cesium has. So what happens is, when the electron beam is scanning them in a raster to produce a television image, if it scans a globule of silver that has been exposed to light, that globule is quite positively charged. The electron beam hits it, gives it a negative charge, that forms a bit of a negatively charged capacitor, and you can read that charge again from the side electrode. Other pieces of, of Silver that have not been exposed to much light retain their original negative charge. And so when the electron beam scans them, you don't get much of a, a change in electrical potential coming out the electrode at the back. The really neat thing was this storage ability because the globules of cesium are gradually being charged up during the whole scanning process, even when the electron beam is somewhere else. The unfortunate thing is it was not a perfect tube. And what would actually happen is when you'd get parts of it being exposed to bright light, the electrons that would come flying off the globules of cesium, instead of being caught by some of these surrounding pickup um, circular electrodes and probably this one over here, um, what would happen is some of those electrons would in fact drop back onto nearby parts of the um, cesium coated piece of mica. So what you would get is sort of ghosting around the bright parts of the image um, that would then appear somewhat darker than they would otherwise be. And you can see this on some of the early kinescopes of television shows. Anyway, that was one of the problems. The other problem it has was the electrons hitting the target at the back 
would cause secondary electrons to be emitted and that would also have some weird image effects. But the bottom line is it was a breakthrough and it's really what got early television broadcasting going. So I'm very proud to have this thing in my collection. I actually got it about 20 years ago in the early days of eBay and I got it for about a hundred bucks. I think partly because a lot of people didn't really know what it was. And so I'm quite thrilled to have it. Now, you might wonder how I recognized the iconoscope tube on eBay, and it was because of this. This wonderful old Encyclopedia Britannica that my dad had, and we had the whole set of about 24 volumes, and this particular one was my favorite one because it had all things interesting in it, at least to me. It had things like telegraphs and telephones and telescopes, but most importantly, it had television and it even showed the iconoscope tube over here and over here. And so I was fascinated by that as a kid and I was absolutely thrilled when I actually came across a real vintage iconoscope tube. And so that's why this tube is in my archives of vintage electronics.